All right, welcome to day 40 of Mastering Astral Projection. Um, something that I wanted to cover today, which was from the chapter, uh, uh, which was um, preparing your meditation space. So um, if any of you are using your bed, uh, Robert suggests that you um, reposition yourself in the bed. So like put your head at the foot um, or reposition the bed completely, like um, put the head board on a different wall, uh, or even possibly move out of the room and do the work somewhere else so that you can take your identification out of the sleeping state um, and move it into uh, doing something like astral projection, something different than the body and consciousness are used to, uh, that will help to uh, initiate the uh, out-of-body experience. Um, this week, I'm sorry, today, uh, well this week we're working on loosening and today uh, we're doing spin loosening. So uh, we're doing all the same exercises except for the last exercise is body loosening, spin loosening. And so he says to start out by doing the bounce technique, uh, bringing your consciousness out in front of the body somewhere and going from floor to ceiling if you are sitting and doing um, the wall to wall if you're laying down uh, which brings up another thing that I wanted to mention which was if you're sitting um, they're saying that a reclining position at about 37 degrees is the best position to do astral projection or get out of the body so um, I, uh, I've been sitting straight up uh, and when I lean back, I tend to fall asleep a little bit easier. So, like today, consciousness, again, I was battling with going back and forth between sleep and wakefulness. So, uh, it can get challenging when you start to recline. But, yeah, 37 degrees. So, if you can get yourself into a reclining chair, that'd be great. Um, so, after you do this for a few minutes of doing the bounce, um, either wall to wall or floor to ceiling, um, then you're going to bring your awareness to moving around the room. Uh, against the wall in a clockwise fashion. So, uh, Brian Mercer suggests that you actually walk around the room and get acquainted with what the surface of the wall is like at eye level all the way around the room in the same way that you practice the out-of-body experience uh, like a rehearsal. You do a rehearsal in this case as well. And the idea is that you're moving your consciousness out of the body. You're tricking the subconscious mind into thinking that you are out of the body to get it to be a little bit more acquainted with the experience of being out of the body. So when you're moving along the wall, you're examining the surface. For instance, in my room, I have a couple of walls um, that have windows, and those windows uh, may have blinds open or closed. So if I'm moving along the surface of the blind, what is that blind like? Uh, so I cross a couple of strings, I go across the plastic, and then I hit the window jam, and I move across the surface of the window jam, which is ornate and has uh, surface fluctuations. And then I move around the walls, and um, on my walls I have uh, knotty pine panels, so there's a groove in between each panel. So I'm, I'm examining what the wall feels like as I move my consciousness along it. At one point I might cross over an object because I have things on the walls like pictures and soundproofing. Um, and uh, so I acquaint myself with the surface and the texture of those things as if I were actually moving my face along the wall is the idea. Um, and again, this is to familiarize your subconscious mind with the experience of being out of the body. And movement uh, which uh, Robert says is one of the critical things to getting the, uh, the subconscious adapted to, which is the experience of movement. He said it's really difficult to do astral projection if you are stationary. So this experience of movement, this experience of being outside of your body, um, even when you're just thinking about it, is one of the preliminary factors. So one of the things that he says is that um, you want to develop a spinning sensation. So as you're consciousness is uh, up against the wall, experiencing the wall, your body's sensation, uh, you're trying to get it to spin. And they're saying to move all the way around the room within one to three seconds. I was going a bit slower than that. So um, Brian says you really need to kind of step into this slowly. So um, it may be that you don't 
jump right in and you're doing it but you're experiencing it and practicing it until you get really good at it then maybe one to three seconds going all the way around the room and developing the spin sensation hopefully we'll be doing this exercise again because i didn't really feel like i grokked it uh the first time through um one of the other things that robert talks about is uh you're trying to get to the place where you're having body sensations of vertigo. Um, so uh, this is one of the ways that he expects that you achieve that, to get to that place where um, you're really starting to feel like you're not settled in your body any longer. Probably like the experience of being on a roller coaster is what I'm guessing. So anyway, um, I did it. I didn't really feel much. Um, you know, I didn't get any vertigo sensations. I've done a bit of these bouncing techniques, though, so I kind of knew what to expect, and my body knows what to expect, too. So, um, And I still haven't had any really tremendous falling sensations or vertigo sensations or anything that feels like I'm disconnecting from my physical body and moving uh, into the uh, projected body double. So anyway, but that's why we're practicing. All right, thanks a lot.